the payload capacity of spacecraft, the ability to recover and reuse vehicles. Do you know what lies behind all these remarkable capabilities? It's the engine systems. Through the fifth test flight of Starship, we've witnessed SpaceX bringing many of its ambitious goals to life with a significant contribution from the performance of its engines. Let's dive into everything in today's episode. SpaceX made history on October 13, 2024, by writing a new chapter in space exploration. In this unforgettable event, the company successfully caught the world's largest rocket, Starship Super Heavy, in midair, marking a pivotal milestone in aerospace technology. This groundbreaking achievement was largely thanks to the outstanding performance of the Raptor engines. For the first time during a Starship test flight, not a single engine malfunctioned. And for the first time ever, SpaceX successfully recovered a booster fully intact, along with all of its engines. Since the booster returned to the launch site, we were able to get incredibly detailed views of the engine system. It was easy to see that during its return journey, the booster and its Raptor engines endured immense pressure and extreme temperatures. Around the T plus 610 mark, the engine bay glowed a brilliant red during the landing sequence, even though no engines were firing. This wasn't a surprise, but a phenomenon SpaceX had anticipated. This phenomenon is pretty straightforward. As the rocket re-entered Earth's atmosphere, it faced extremely high temperatures due to friction with the air. At speeds exceeding Mach 4, about four times the speed of sound, the kinetic energy of the rocket converted into thermal energy from the friction with air molecules. Specifically, the energy amounted to roughly one megajoule per kilogram, one MJ per kilogram. With this energy level, temperatures can soar to around 1,000 Kelvin, about 727 degrees Celsius, which is enough to make the material glow, creating the stunning visual effect we observed. SpaceX's strategy for landing the booster involves letting it fall along vertically, meaning the engine bay faces the high temperatures directly, absorbing the heat for the entire booster on re-entry. To protect the structural integrity of the booster, the company has to develop advanced re-entry shielding solutions. These protective shields are designed to withstand extreme temperatures while evenly dispersing heat across the surface. When we see the engine bay glowing, that's the result of the shields absorbing and distributing heat during re-entry. Essentially, the shielding was burning, and the uniform glow of the engine bay indicated effective heat dispersion, preventing the formation of local hotspots that could cause serious damage to the rocket's structure and critical components. After the test flight, Elon Musk shared detailed images of the rocket's condition. He noted, a few outer engine nozzles are warped from heating and some other minor issues. However, he confidently assured that these damages are easily addressed. Upon closer inspection, we can see that the most severely deformed nozzles are located in the outermost ring of the engine cluster. This deformation isn't just minor warping. It's a significant change in shape. Nozzles that were once perfectly round have now become oval, and some are even nearing a triangular form. For those who closely follow SpaceX, this sight may seem familiar. After recovering Booster B-11 from the sea following the fourth test flight, similar deformations were observed on the outermost engines. Here's the thing. Temperatures inside a rocket engine and its nozzles can soar up to 3,300 degrees Celsius. To put that into perspective, that's more than half the surface temperature of the sun. At those levels, most common metals would melt like butter. That's why designing and building rocket engines requires advanced cooling methods to prevent them from literally melting away. When the engines are running, the cooling system keeps them at least moderately cool or ensures even temperatures across the bell. The point is, during the operation of the Super Heavy Booster, not all engines were used equally. The central engines were more heavily utilized, especially during the critical phase of landing the booster on the chopsticks. In contrast, the outer engines, particularly those on the outermost ring, were used far less. We can observe that the outer engines shut down earlier during the flight, meaning their cooling systems might also stop working. This left these engines exposed to high temperatures and uneven air pressure during re-entry without the protection of an active cooling system. Well, this is the textbook scenario for metal warping, and that's how we can explain why the nozzles of the engines became deformed, with the severity of the warping decreasing as you move inward from the outermost ring. After the successful recovery of Booster B-12, SpaceX will begin a comprehensive and detailed technical analysis. This isn't just a routine inspection. It's a valuable opportunity to gather real-world data on how the materials and structure performed under the extreme conditions of space. The overall assessment could involve industrial X-ray imaging, a technique that allows engineers to see through the metal structure without dismantling it. This enables them to detect micro-cracks, variations in material thickness, or any internal deformations that can't be seen with the naked eye. 
Following that, materials scientists will take samples from different engine components and examine them under scanning electron microscopes, SEM, or transmission electron microscopes, TEM. These tools allow them to observe the crystal structure of the materials at the atomic level, identifying any changes in the microstructure of the alloys caused by high heat and stress. As you can imagine, there's a lot of critical information that can only be gathered by physically dissecting the object. The data gathered from this analysis will not only be valuable for improving the engines, but could also be applied to enhance the heat shield on the upper stage of Starship. They're related to each other, actually. Wait, would you want me to cover the performance of Starship's TPS in another video? Back to the engine system I need to emphasize again. The engine system of the Starship Super Heavy performed brilliantly during the recent test flight. The deformations observed on the engine nozzles were well within the company's expectations. The smooth and synchronized operation of the Raptor engine cluster marks a significant step toward realizing the vision of a fully reusable rocket. Elon Musk didn't shy away from expressing his strong confidence in the company's ability to overcome these challenges. My guess? They'll handle it with Raptor 3. One of Musk's most remarkable claims about Raptor 3 is its ability to operate without a heat shield. He's absolutely confident in the engine's superior heat resistance. It's clear that SpaceX has made a massive leap in materials technology and cooling engineering. With Raptor 3, it seems SpaceX has significantly upgraded the efficiency of its regenerative cooling system, allowing the engine to operate at higher temperatures without the need for additional protection. There's also a possibility that SpaceX is combining different cooling methods for the nozzles. Additionally, this new generation of engines might be built from advanced alloys or composite materials capable of withstanding extreme heat and stress. We've witnessed the debut of the Raptor 3 engine, a technological masterpiece that looks like a perfectly rendered 3D model. However, it hasn't been tested on an actual flight yet. According to predictions, Starship's sixth flight will still use the Starship Block 1 with Raptor 2 engines. This means SpaceX still has work to do with the current engine generation, or will see a similar performance in Flight 6 until they fly Raptor 3, which could happen as early as IFT-7. That's when we'll truly see how flawless these new engines are. The FAA has already completed its review for Starship's sixth flight approval. Pretty fast, right? This pace suggests that the upcoming flight plan might not differ much from the fifth. But with SpaceX, we've come to expect surprises and breakthroughs. It wouldn't be surprising if they added more ambitious goals to their flight plans down the line. Currently, SpaceX engineers are back at Starbase, actively repairing and maintaining the orbital launch mount OLM and the chopstick system. Considering the workload before each test flight, data analysis, new tests, and hardware upgrades. The optimistic prediction is that we could see the sixth flight in about a month and a half to two months. All right, that's it for today. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more in-depth looks at the latest advancements in space technology. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.